everybody it's about 3 30 Thursday the 28th of March probably can't see it real well but I got little laser lines on the car so I've got a laser laser level here and uh, even though I said I wasn't gonna I was gonna stop playing with gaps I lied I'm gonna continue to play with gaps and uh, I'm gonna try to get the car leveled off the frame and then look at the body and see if the body might be on a little crooked or, or something like that now, if you can see, probably can't, but the laser line right now is running through that hole right there, essentially centered up. You can kind of see that it's a little bit high. And then this one over here is way high, which jives with the car looking like it's leaning down a little bit. So that's cool. It's, it's all right. I don't have a problem with that. But what I'm going to do now is get the car on jack stands so that I can remove the suspension from the equation. So I'm going to jack it up a little bit, get jack stands under it, try to level it out as best as I can, and then take a look at the body lines and see if the body is telling me that the body is maybe crooked. Hopefully that will lead me to figuring out whether or not I've got gap issues that I'm creating for myself because the body is not on straight. Who knows? This may be a shim issue. I'm kind of stabbing in the dark here, but I figure I've got no hurry. So I'll see if... Uh, Till I convince myself that I've exhausted all my possibilities, I'm going to continue playing around. So you guys are probably going to think I went off the deep end here, but here you go. Here's one for you. So you can see down here I've got a level hanging off of the bonnet right now. But what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to hang it off the frame. And I'm going to show you something and explain to you what I'm doing here. Alright, so I've got the level hanging off using coat hangers hanging off of the pivot points for the bonnet. If you notice, I removed the dollies from underneath the wheels so they wouldn't interfere, and I jacked the car up on jack stands. And if you look close, I'll zoom in a little bit, you can see I got shims underneath this one jack stand. My goal here is to get the frame as level to the floor as I can within the boundaries of, you know, being, being a human being and not having a, an accurate measurements. So the coat hanger pieces are the exact same length and they're hanging off of two identical points to the level. And if you look, I don't know if I'm going to be able to zoom in that far, but if you can see that, I don't know how focused that is, but the level is off just a little bit. So it's to the, uh, the level is to the right a little bit, which tells me that the right part of the car uh, needs to move to try to fix that. So that's, I got to continue to work on the shims. What I did in the back, there's two eyes back there that they used to, to bolt these things down to the ships, I think, when they shipped them over. And I'm getting about the same thing and got jack stands back there as well and got it leveled up. So my whole point here is to try to get the frame level and a known quantity. Then look at the body and shoot the body lines. I've got an electric level here, and I know it's kind of dark back here. But you can see that electric level there and what that essentially is trying to run on right now is the line of the rear valance. So you can see it covers pretty good right there and then as I move to the right, that line slopes up which tells me that the body's a little bit crooked. Assuming that the frame is level with the body crooked, now I know that, well, the body is crooked. So that hopefully, in my head at least, is going to mess with my gaps a little bit. And I know I told you guys I wouldn't talk about gaps anymore, but there you go. So what I'm kind of hoping here is to kind of get lucky, and maybe it's a body twist or something that's opening this gap up and closing that gap or whatever, and I'm hoping to be able to remove or replace or put in or put out shims, including the spacers that are in the car, to try to kind of twist the body a little bit to get my gaps right or to assist in getting my gaps right, so to get the body square. So I'm gonna run around a couple more times here. I'm gonna to try to get the body as level as, or excuse me, the frame as level as I can get it. Still got a little bit of tweaking to do with the jack stands and all that. But try to get the frame as level as I can get it, and then look at the body and start playing with that and see if I can get lucky with maybe loosening and tightening and see if I can get any motion and any, uh, any joy on getting this body lined up a little bit better. So this is a little bit of a shot in the dark here. I'm not sure if it'll work. I may be totally and completely wasting my time today, but uh, 
but it's actually kind of fun. So, you know, there you go. So what I'm using here for the level is this Tack Life. Uh, what's it say? SCL01. And it shoots la laser level and it shoots it uh, two lines perpendicular to each other. And it's nice that it's self-leveling. If you can, uh, if you can see, so with, as long as you're within four degrees, I think it'll self-level, self-level. And if it's not self-level, I'll show you here. You can kind of see it. See how it kind of bounces around a little bit. So that's it trying to self-level. If you move it out more than four degrees, it starts blinking at you and telling you that you're all messed up. Anyway, so now I've got the frame pretty much level, I think. It's at least. It's close to the back seems to be nearly perfect the front close enough and so now I just kind of want to find a reference point on the bonnet and I can see how level the bonnet is I'm not incredibly concerned with the levelness of the bonnet because um, the bonnet's easy easiest to move so I'll just I got this on a tripod here so let me uh, let me pause here and get it get it's little better set up and I'll show you all right so if you see where the laser line is, right about there, just a little bit above, essentially meets where that seam is right there. And then if you look at this one, you can see that it's quite a bit off. So that tells me that the bonnet is not now level to the frame, but the frame is level. So this side would need to come up or that other side would need to go down. So great. But again, I'm not that concerned with the bonnet. So now I'll go around back and I'll show you the body in the back. So now if you can see this level line, that's, uh, that's really close and actually probably so close that it might not even be worth messing with. So this is assuming that I put my rear balance in properly. If I go up to the line of the boot lid, so just barely touching the boot lid over there and just barely touching the bottom of the turn signal over there. So that tells me that it is a little bit crooked, just a little bit, and maybe it will be worth enough. So with the way that it's leaning, that would tell me that I need to pull a shim out on the passenger side to drop the passenger side down a little bit and, uh, and see about that. So now I'm going to lift the bonnet up and I'm going to shoot the body from the, from the front there and see if I can get that dialed in. All right, might not be able to see the level line very well, but there's a level line there. It's blinking, so you'll see it dim in and out to catch your eye. Um, so that's maybe, that's pretty close. I kind of had to set this up in a, on the tripod and kind of in an awkward way to try to angle it down. So I'm outside of the auto leveling, but I put a, uh, just a regular square level on there, and it's, it's level, as level as I can get it. I can't really, without the bonnet being off, I can't get away from the car far enough to, to make it, uh, to get an accurate shot. But, in short, I'm confident that that's level enough. If anything, it, it uh, contributes to my idea that maybe that one driver's side of there is, droops a little bit. But I don't think it's enough to go in and play with shims um, at all. Especially since I'm not incredibly confident with the measurement. So... In short, I think the body's straight, which is good. Doesn't do me wonders for my gaps, but at least now I know that I, I'm pretty confident that the body's straight. So, uh, with everything tight, everything came in pretty well with the shims the way they are. So I guess I should take small consolation in the fact that I didn't screw up the body replacing the sills and all that other stuff. All right, so uh, moving on. I did go ahead and order a new bonnet stay from Rimmers. This comes in two pieces. You get the bottom part and the top part. And it's essentially the same. Not a whole lot of difference here except it's, you know, correct. Um, you can see that it doesn't really lock in per se tight. But if the bonnet were start to fall, I'll show you. If the bonnet were start to try to chop my head off, then it does lock in. So as it comes up, it, it, it kind of opens it back up but it won't allow it to go. So that seems like it would work properly. So you break the knuckle right here and push that back. But this one uh, attaches properly. It's got the little dog leg in it. And I'm not real crazy about how that fits up. I need to put spacers in there to try to make that uh, stick out a little bit further. But, uh, but otherwise, it seems to work and it doesn't interfere with the bulkhead. So 
I'm going to call this one uh, good as far as you know being uh, being a good solution. So it's relatively cheap. They had a, they just got done with like a 15% sale. I think each piece was either 13 bucks or 16 bucks. So you know you're looking at 30 dollars if you kind of include the little bit of shipping you would pay for that. So that was worth it to me to go ahead. So now I'm going to uh, keep going with some body stuff here. The other thing I picked up was a whole new set of hinges. I decided to just go ahead and buy them. I think I had mentioned this in my last video. They're about 21 bucks a pop from TRF, the Roadster Factory. Uh, on a kind of a side note of that, I haven't uh, shopped from TRF for a little while because Rimmers was having all the sales and the exchange rate was so good. But this time I bounced some prices off of Rimmers during their sale and I, I ordered several things uh, from the Roadster Factory that were at least as cheap if not cheaper than the Rimmers with the Rimmer stuff on sale. So even though I've been uh, praising Rimmers and everything of late, again a lot of that came from the exchange rate. So now that that's not quite as good as it used to be, if you're going to be some shopping, I, I'd recommend you, you pull up you know, Spit Bits and, and uh, Rimmers, maybe Moss and uh, TRF and, and kind of bounce them all over the place. Um, so anyway, the hinges are slightly different. The hills all line up. I've already done that, but if you can tell this, the wing, I guess, the thickness or the width of the hinge plate that goes to the body is quite a bit bigger than the original hinges, but the holes are properly aligned, so I'm not worried about them fitting up. Um, I don't think this is going to hurt anything. I've got all sorts of room towards the front of the hinge. You know, the A-post over here is wide open. If anything, maybe it'll help a little bit because it'll give it a little bit more of a... Uh, a larger surface area to distribute some of the uh, some of the weight. I guess I could probably send an email to TRF and see that they did that on purpose. I mean, it's significantly different enough that I can't imagine that they wouldn't. And the other plates are identical on the back where it bolts to the door. So maybe they did do that on purpose, and maybe it is an upgraded hinge with regards to that uh, to that to minimize cracking on the hinge plates or something like that. So we'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick a door and go at it. All right, everybody, about eight o'clock. I'm going to call it a night. Played with the bonnet a little bit, played with the door a little bit, and uh, got the door fitting pretty well in here. Put a whole bunch of more shims in that bottom hinge there to try to force that out. And uh, and this gap closed up just a hair, but now it's way proud down here, worse than it was. And I would rather have it uh, open at that front than uh, up here. I'd rather have it open up there than as proud as it is back here. I do have a problem show you real quick must have been when I was putting in the sill where it uh, it snuck up snuck in on me here show you this um, you can see how much of a gap that is there so it's, it's pretty flush here and then it uh, the sill is nice but but it should come out a little bit so that's part of the reason I think that I'm proud there just for me I think I was not very kind in here um, whether or not I'm going to cut that and open it up, I haven't decided yet. The, uh, depends on how well I can get the door. If I can get the door a little bit better and it's just proud in here, then I'm probably not going to, not going to cut it. <clears throat> Excuse me, not going to cut into it, but, um, there you go. So I promise, kind of promised I wouldn't talk about gaps. So I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet, but that's it for me. And I'll see you sometime this weekend. Good morning, everybody. Eight o'clock. Time to get back at it. All right, you can see I've got the laser level pointing at the bonnet here. The frame is still level from the last visit. I didn't touch anything. So now I've got the laser level bisecting the bolts here on the uh, driver's side headlight bucket there, the bolt holes. And I've got it over here. And you can see that this, the laser line goes a little bit lower than the holes. So that tells me that it's crooked with the passenger side being a little higher than the driver's side. And then based on the gaps off of the sills i'm going to raise the driver's side a little bit using the adjustment that i have here and i got a lot of room there now again what i'm trying to do is level out the bonnet and then once i get it level you can tell here i don't have any room to go any further back and i still have a pretty good gap here so what i'm going to try to do is loosen all of the pivot tubes up every one of them and hopefully i can do that with the car you know with the with the i'm just going to loosen them i'm not going to remove them or anything be able to do that with the bonnet still attached, but keep these front pivot points tight. 
And then I'm going to try to move the bonnet around and see how much play I get out of it by adjusting the pivot tubes, but with the bonnet still attached to the pivot points up here and see if I can score any points. Just a different way to do it. I don't think I've ever loosened all of the pivot tubes all at the same time and then wiggled the bonnet around. Again, just trying to get to the same end state here, but trying to come up with different methods to get there. I am happy with where the bonnet is. I've probably said this about 15 times already, but these gaps up here came in okay. Uh, I still have this lip that I've got to contend with, but that I'll use for that center transverse uh, support. And a little bit of the same thing over here. It's sticking in, or sticking out a little too far, but I'll, I'll take care of that hopefully the same way. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the gap in the back here and the shape. On the other side, however, I do have some, some hammer and dolly work to do. I don't know how well you can see that, but as it slopes down, uh, probably about three or four inches off the sill or so, it, it gets a little uh, out of shape there. So, But I'm not going to worry about that until I get the doors on. I'm going to try to fix these little gaps now here at the sill to the wing transition. See if I can get them vertically aligned so it's smooth there. And then uh, start working back on the doors. Before I continue on with the doors here, I am going to get the seat thing figured out, at least on the passenger side. I didn't bring the driver's side frame with me. So I am going to end up just drilling a hole right through the floorboard here, lining it up with, the, with that guy there. The important part here, though, is the, the rails, this one and this one, are not tied together as far as sliding goes. So you can get the thing crooked, and you don't want it to be crooked because then it won't slide evenly or, or at all can get bound up. I think I mentioned that in my last video. So all I did was simply take the measurement from this front panel here, the front uh, cross member to the edge, and uh, made sure that they were pretty close within about a millimeter or so. So now I've got that hole lined up. I'm going to mark that guy off, drill a hole through the floorboard as much as I hate to do that, but that's the way that I'm going to go. And I'm going to have this contraption here. A, uh, this is a, a grade 8 bolt. I don't think it really matters, but so a bolt lock washer and a flat washer on the from the car side and then underneath the floor a nylock nut and a, and a wide uh, fender washer there just to try to distribute some of the load. So hopefully between the, the lock washer and the nylock nut you don't normally use those two together um, but I figured I would this time so hopefully all that will will uh, take care of this. Holes are drilled, Sleet seat slides which is good. I'll uh, show you the holes here so here's how it lined up so you can see how much distance you got there not too bad I also have found that the holes in the floor the bolt holes existing are just a little bit too close together front to back I'm not sure if that's a difference in the seat rail when they went to the different seat rails if that if those dimensions front to back got a little bit different or if it's just the imperfections in the floorboard but I just took my step drill and drilled out the holes in the uh, seat rail just a little bit bigger just to give me a little bit of wiggle room there. But that seems to have worked and that's what I'm going to stick with. And uh, I'll go from there. In the, in the existing holes that are already there, I'll probably just take a little bit of Loctite. Uh, blue, I won't use red and I'll run a, run a uh, bolt through it and, and just call it good and, and try to shave it off even underneath just to, to uh, prevent any water intrusion or anything like that. So there you go. About 2.30 or so. Happy with the way this door came out. I've got a little bit of work down to do here to get that to level out. Um, I think I might just bend the door. But I, it's a little bit proud down here, but not too much. And I, like I showed you earlier, where it not being level, I think that's what it all is. Otherwise, again, a little bit of work here just to kind of pound the door out to get that to level up. I'm struggling. And the bonnet's still good, by the way, even it, though it's gone up and down a couple times. Struggling with the driver's side door. It needs to come back further than the, than the hinge points are allowing me to go. So what I have done or going to do is essentially put spacers on the part of the hinge that bolts to the door. And if you can see here, I have these pretty thick round washers in, but they're interfering and extending beyond the hinge. So I'm going to just take an angle grinder and just grind them flush with the rest of the hinge so that they kind of get out of my way there uh, and see if this this will work for me. I'm not, uh, yeah, we'll see if this works. As far as I am concerned, and I've said this before, but I think I'm really ready to say it now, I'm happy with my gaps. Even on the center of the bonnet. So I was able to kind of manhandle this one out and then use the latch also to help me kind of flip that a little bit. It might need a little bit more 
down there, but it's okay. This gap is pretty good, pretty straight. Um, this gap is good, and if you look, I got most of the rise out of the bonnet. And what I did was adjust this cone height here, and this can even come down just a little bit more. And then I put a 2x4 here, and a 2x4 over on that side, and just kind of pressed down in the center, and it seemed to have worked. There's a, it's a little wavy. If you look at it, it's not like it goes a little low over there. It comes around a little bit and everything like that, but I could probably go around and tweak it in a little bit, but I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. I'm really happy with the way that this door shuts. That's nice and solid. So this this door is this door's done definitely. Not as crazy about this door over here. You can see that gap's a little bit bigger, but I really don't have any more distance to go back. Happy with the uh, the sill to bonnet gap there. This gap here is still a little bit wide. It's about six or seven millimeters, but it's uh, it's not too bad. But you, I'll show you this door here. It's, uh, it just sits a little low. So it still closes, but it just doesn't sound as like it's going in quite as smooth. So that's probably a striker plate positioning thing. I might be able to tweak that in a little bit more, so I'll, I'll visit that. But otherwise, now uh, the next step will be to do all the marks, punch marks or scribe marks. I still haven't decided how I'm going to mark everything yet as far as the hinge placements and all that kind of stuff goes. I'm not drilling anything, but, uh, but that'll be for another day because I'm done for the day. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. That's all I got for today and for the weekend. Please leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Uh, I apologize for the continuing gap work, but I feel better about it now, so I'll be able to sleep at night. Have a good weekend. Cheers.